Plus. Got like our coordinate. So everybody that's joined, just drop in the chat where you guys are calling in from. Uh, we're gonna get started in about a second here. I'm just gonna give uh, some more people some time to get in. But yeah, in the meantime, just drop in the chat where you guys are calling in from. Darren, Darren's over there in uh, in Maryland, more than a month to get back. What's up, Taha? Yeah, I, re I remember uh, used to join the sessions. Texas, 1 a.m. gang. Yeah, no, that's that's pretty crazy. I mean, for people that are international, the the open time Australia. is obviously like in the middle of the night for you, which sucks, but. Dirty Jersey. <laughs> yeah, so you know what we're dealing with out here in Jersey. Some crazy, crazy things. Oh, yeah, we got people from all over. Oh, yeah. A couple more shout out. Let me see. Uh, Jamaica, Morocco, South Korea, Montreal, Nigeria, Georgia, India, Portugal, London, Miami. Wow. This is a, uh, this is a good variety. Yeah, it's awesome. diverse. Nice diversity. Yeah. Yeah. What do you guys? Uh, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna rip through all the analysis that we're looking at for this week, as always. But if you guys, uh, you know, want to go over anything in particular, if you got any questions, just feel free to throw it in the chat while me and Nick are going. Uh, you know, going about our business out here. You're going international. Yeah. No, I would say for the for the most part, the people that follow us are pretty international, and it's like. 60% international, freaking 40% US, and then like 30%, yeah. 30 Florida. It's actually, yeah, it's, it's surprising. You, you definitely would think we have a lot more US, you know, but it is, you know, Forex. So the international widespread part is definitely, uh, you know, part of this industry. And so I've seen it's cool to see Miami, you know, we Texas, need... Florida is like the main, the main area. The hub, bro. It's a hub. The hub, yeah. It really is. But yeah, I mean, we meet people from all over. It's it's awesome. You know, you get to just meet all different kinds of people. Really yeah, that's, cool. the, that's the beauty of trading, guys. You guys can meet people from all over. I think a lot of people get into it for that reason, because people want to travel or just not be chained down to one area. And you could certainly meet someone from, you know, who knows where. I mean, someone on our team right now, he... He actually lives in uh, the UK, man. So one day we'll we'll settle up and meet this guy. Yep, exactly. Portugal, enjoy the cold. Oh yeah, and it is cold. It is very cold. I've been here before COVID nineteen. Yeah, no, Ty, you were here a while, a while back. But yeah, yeah. since since COVID really started, that's when we started doing the um, the live sessions uh like pretty much consistently so if you guys go on our youtube you could even see about a year back is when we really started doing the live trading sessions every single week and uh at this point now there's there's over you know 50 75 100 videos of them on there which is pretty wild yeah it's a lot of it's a lot of time definitely take a minute to get through all of it but yeah tons of videos uploaded here let me share up here um, yeah, no, you're good to share here. Oh, cool. 50 people. Good start. All right, cool. All right, so we're going to start off, guys. We're going to get started here five minutes in. I think uh, you know, we got a good enough amount of people, plus it is recorded. So, yeah, let's get started. What's going on, Samir? We're doing good, man. Thanks for asking. Hope you had a good weekend, too. So let's get right into it. We're going to start off with DXY. What I'm going to do on these next uh, pairs, these six pairs, I'm going to start on the daily. I'm going to pretty much just showcase the overall trend, drop to the four hour, and then give you guys some trade scenarios, some trade setups. You know, we'll see what we could find. We could see what price action is doing on the lower time frame and see what that could potentially mean for the week ahead. All right. So right now we're on DXY, which is just the US dollar. Okay. It makes up 80% of all trade and is considered the reserve currency of the world. So we don't actually trade this. We more or less analyze this and use it as an indicator. So obviously, if the dollar has been in a steep downtrend on the daily time frame, as we can see, you know, since May, you know, the dollar's bearish. So all other pairs, you know, again, 80% of all trades from the dollar. So you're going to see the market move quite a bit, um, you know, with a bearish dollar in mind. Okay, so that's kind of how we use it. Um, but yeah, right here on the daily, very bearish as we can see. And then I like to pick out the most significant zone and kind of, you know, uh, 
come up with some scenarios based on this. So we recently broke through major support. Hey, now we're testing as resistance. This is a clear transition. So now we're going to drop to the four hour and you know kind of play it off the zone with this overall trend in mind. Okay, so DXY, four hour. Here we go. Let's reset the chart. All right. So we're just going to focus on this bit of price action here, this little structure, you know, this piece of structure here, this price action, okay, from back in January till now. Okay. Let's expand this a little bit. So this is that significant zone we just talked about. This monthly, we broke through it over here. And this is the retest. Okay. So price action came up into the zone, good volume. And then a quick swift reversal comes back right through the MAs, tests again, first lower high, then breaks through our uh, it was resistance, was major support here, 90.8 broke through it, right? And now we're testing again, you know, um, lower highs and so on. So we saw a pull back up. We hit 7.86, kind of came close to this trend line here, testing as resistance this time. It held, came back through. We got an MA cross, 200 EMA cross as well, uh, with lots of bearish variation. So this is clearly bearish. Um, what do we want to see happen now? Uh, ideally, you know, some sort of pullback to a more defined retest of this area. You know, and then a continuation down. That'd be very nice for this week. Uh, but it also could just continue to range in here for a while. So, I mean, we really got to see, you know, how it reacts, if it's going to break out of this zone to the upside or to the downside. But overall, it is very bearish right now. So we're going to have to see. We're going to have to see. So, it, you know, definitely could pull back, test this area, then continue down or just continue right through this, uh, through this level right here at 90, 90 flat. All right, and then for us to consider a bullish dollar, I want to see a transition above 90.8, some sort of higher low here with strong bullish uh, setups, and then we'll target towards this monthly and then, you know, reanalyze and see what price action is doing. All right, but yeah, this is DXY. I mean, this thing reversed pretty good last week. And, uh, you know, we had some good movement in here. It actually, it actually popped up and then reversed pretty hard and then dropped again. So, you know, we'll see if that volume picks up and just kind of hold just bear, holds this bearishness for now. So we'll see. Let's move on to AU. Daily time frame to start. Overall, very bullish. Let me show you guys here. Very bullish, right? Very steady bullish trend. We recently broke through this major zone here, our weekly at 076. We popped up, formed a pattern, came back down, tested as support, confirmed this is a higher low as we got these bullish confirmations crossing to the MAs, and then we continued to rally higher. So. Clearly it's bullish on AU, right? Let's go to the four hour now and see what potentially is next for this pair. I'm gonna zoom out for a little bit and focus on this bit of price action above this weekly zone. Okay, so this is actually got some bullish volume right for market open. So this is already extending 0% a little more, but essentially we had this consolidation pulled back. Here's that higher low we were talking about. Here's the confirmation of that higher low, right? Nice bullish variation. You know, MA cross, surging higher, breaking through resistance levels, forming higher lows, um, you know, closer to this high over here, okay? So very bullish, it followed through, it's pushing higher. We got a little bit of consolidation here, it broke higher again, um, but right now it is a bit overextended, right? So we, we fibbed from this low to this high. So right now we can't really place any orders. We're not looking to buy at a high, right? So we wanna see a pullback preferably. And the next level that we'd be interested in taking buys from would probably be down here at a, you know, our 38.2 fib level, where we'd like to see structure form lines up with these highs as well. So there's a good amount of support here. But if this pulls back, you know, that's what we're looking for. You know, this very well could just continue to surge higher and we'll just wait for the high to be formed. And then, you know, we're looking for structure, but there's no way in hell I'm buying this. I'm not looking for any buys. Even if I saw like a pennant or something, you know, I really wouldn't feel comfortable taking it. It's not a conservative trade. You know, this is just pretty overextended. And again, this is this is a decent amount of volume for AU. 100 pips on AU, that's that's a good amount of movement. So ideally, I'd like to see a pullback. I mean, we'll see what happens. But overall, AU is definitely bullish uh, until we at least, the very least, see a transition of 0775. So that means a lower high below this level. Price action big, breaks back through and then continues lower with strong bearish uh, you know, candles and setups. So we were then look to just target down towards major support, you know, see how it reacts in this entire area. Cause this is, a, this is just a whole area of consolidation, right? There was tons of, you know, price action reaction in here, tons of bouncing, even down here, this is a, like a little bit of a range. So, I mean, we have to see a lot to really consider AU bearish, but for now, this is what we're looking at. Looking, uh, 
looking very, very bullish. So we'll hopefully get a pullback sooner than later. If not, again, just, you know, this, as this keeps pushing, we're just going to wait for that high. Okay, so that's AU. Let's move on to AJ. It's going to be pretty similar, maybe a little more volume. Okay, here's AJ, daily time frame, Very bullish, as we can see. Very, very bullish. Again, very much like AU. You pretty much the same exact uh, little channel here. Very strong bullish trend, right? Key level was here at this monthly, 76.5. We broke that a little early and then took off. And then now we are currently at our weekly. So 83.25, huge level of resistance. So we're, we're expecting some sort of reaction here, right? Because this is such a major level, not to the exact pip, but there is, this is just a significant level you should be aware of. That's why it's marked, right? That's why we do our monthly and weekly levels. So we can anticipate some sort of major move. So here we are on the four hour now, very bullish. We saw our high form back here, double top, pulled back, consolidated for a while, confirmed this higher low, let the MAs catch up. And then we you know, stepped in with some momentum again. Continued higher, a lot of volume here. We have a bullish flag, continued very nicely. This is a nice little higher low, long opportunity, right into another flag, again, broke higher. So this thing is just steamrolling through levels right now. So bullish, it's not even funny. So shot right up to our next level here at the weekly. Let's go ahead and adjust this fit based on this time frame. Move this over. Where is this? All right, so now we're at this high. All right, so same thing that we just covered on AU for the most part. It's at a high, we're not looking to buy. And then of course, this level's here, this weekly resistance. So we're definitely not looking to buy. First thing we wanna do is see structure formed. I mean, this is still very much bullish. We have no reason to believe that, you know, we're ready for shorts yet until we see some sort of major transition. Because again, this could just start consolidating or just, you know, hang around this level for a while. So until we see some major transitions, we're, we're just gonna stick with the trend. You know, we're trend trading here. The highest probability trade is going to be a pullback huge volume, a uh, huge bullish volume continues. And then we could target higher towards, you know, potentially the negative 27 fib level or even higher. Okay. But we're just looking to ride this trend. We're just going to see what happens, right? It could definitely consolidate for a while like this. Let me just get the trade, the brush actually it could consolidate, maybe form a flag like we saw, right? Then pull back, give us a transition here and then continue higher. So that's possible, right? Then we're looking for entries in this area, something like that. Okay, confirming through the MAs after we form structure, very possible. Okay, there's a few scenarios this could, this could just continue to bounce in this area for a while and then eventually break again. You know, not really forming structure. And then we have a new FIB. We have to re-extend the zero and then it could fall back down and then finally form structure and continue higher. So there's a couple of ways it could play around this weekly. The main thing we need to be concerned about is that, you know, we're expecting something here. We're not gonna jump the gun. We're not gonna just start buying or selling at this level. We're going to wait for the market to show us something. Okay, so that's the most ideal setup. You know, structure 382, take the long into a higher level. That'd be good. Um, but for us to consider a uh, AJ bearish, right? We want to see a transition of this first, 8225. Then like a lower high, this could be potentially an exaggerated head and shoulders, depending on how it forms. But that's that would be the ideal setup, right? Look to take a short on this lower high down towards you know, uh, major support 81.1. So again, that'd be a lower time frame trade. It is technically counter trend according to the higher time frame, but that is a potential setup considering the volume here. That'd be a nice little hundred pip trade. So worth it. Definitely worth it on the one hour. That'd be an intraday trade. Nice little short opportunity if you catch it early. Okay, but that's AJ. So let's move on to next pair, UJ. This one's looking pretty good. Uh, a little bit of rejection there. Just hoping for some conviction, but let's go to the daily first. Overall, very bearish, but we did actually have a transition here. So actually, let's zoom out a little more. Let's start back a little more. Overall, UJ has been so bearish for a very long time. Just look at this trend, right? Clearly lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, breaking support. So overall, big picture stuff, very, very bearish. But as we get closer to the daily time frame, we do have a bit of a transition here. So this is a daily bearish channel, right? We did get a lower time frame transition here. This is probably a four hour break of a lower high. And then this in here, daily lower high break, confirmed higher low. Now it's continuing higher. So we are technically bullish in the daily. So the four hours bullish, one hour is bullish. So we are technically looking for long opportunities, right? But we could, you know, easily see, you know, price action 
you know, hit a key level, probably around 106, 107, and see a very sharp reversal, that's definitely possible. But uh, for right now, short-term stuff, it's telling us UJ is bullish, right? So let's go to the four hour, see what this four hour has for us. Okay, pretty clear price action, guys. There's good volume here. UJ, um, the US dollar has been moving, so we've been seeing a lot of good structure and price action lately. Uh, this is where that transition first took place, four hour transition. These are a set of lower highs. We broke through it, had a little pattern, tested this as support, then started to rally higher, right? First level we took out was 104.5. As you guys know, this was a major, major level for a while, acted as support uh, on the daily since 2016. We covered that in actually earlier sessions, but it just goes back. It's a very, very significant level. I don't have it drawn all the way back here, but this was kind of the whole level determining on the higher time frames where uh, UJ was potentially going. And when, when we did break this level, we saw a huge drop off 104.5, right, consolidated, and it dropped all the way past 103 to 102.62. So, right, huge level. Once we transitioned above that, clearly bullish. Here was that confirming higher low. Took off, nice bullish variations there. Nice little entry on 38.2. Or it was a 38.2 when this was dipped from this low to this high. We actually caught that trade. That was a nice little long opportunity. And then that brings us to now, right? So we formed a new high. We redraw the fibs because this was this form structure, you know, confirm support, you know, transitioned very nicely. So we refibbed, uh, which which brings us to where we are now, right? We just crossed through the MAs again. We are at key support 105.45 again, and then structures here, right? 382 fib level. So this was showing a bit of bullishness. Uh, I was actually expecting this to kind of engulf through the MAs would have gave it, given us a really nice you know, opportunity to enter on a retest or something, high or low. Really good opportunity would have presented itself there, but we're showing, we're showing exhaustion, guys. It's looking like it's gonna fall through this level. I mean, we really gotta see until we see those conviction candles, but I mean, these are the two scenarios. Overall, it's bullish on the daily. So we are looking to continue long. I just wanna see this higher low form and then I'll be pretty much in on it. Good to go. I'll target this negative 27 PIB level and this weekly up here near 107 so we could see this run a little bit just need to see that volume step in we'll see but again if this does start to fall here we just start rejecting this level like crazy look for some bearish confirmations and then you could take a nice little short down back down towards 104.5 um, again it would be counter trend trade in terms of the daily or lower but you know overall higher time frame you know, this it definitely could just start shooting down but we'll see we'll see so look to play it down to 105 if you see those bearish confirmations. And then, you know, again, we got to wait and reanalyze, see how it reacts at 104.5 because this is such a significant level. All right, and it has been for a while, okay? So that's where we are on UJ. Looks pretty clean. I mean, could go either way though. This exhaustion is a little, a little worrying, but on to UJ. UJ. Yeah, UJ looks like it's going to continue lower. Right, all that exhaustion. All that exhaustion right here. Don't like it. Don't like mm -hmm. it, but... Actually, hold on one second. Just for the sake of analysis, I'm going to go to one hour. Yeah, see, it's just respecting these MAs so well. This is just very clearly a bearish channel, right? Even if we just outline it very roughly here. Okay, look, a little fishing lower into the 200 MA, you know, came right back, lined up with this. This over here, 105.25, very, very minor level, but you know, a little fake out. Looked like it was going to drop lower. Didn't, came right back, nice bullish engulfing. But again, this is just a level in here. We got to see how it reacts. So let me just highlight this. We need to see a break out of this box, basically. And then lower, higher, higher, low above. That's how we can get a better idea of where it's going, right? Does that make sense? Higher, low above, lower, high, below. As long as we're between these this little level here, trapped in this little channel, close to this 200 EMA, you know, we're not gonna have an idea of where it's going. So wait for the break, wait for the break. All right, that's UJ. Pretty clear though, guys, right? Hopefully it's making sense. I know, you know, for most of you guys that have been here, I think most of you guys are veterans. So you guys get most of what's going on. But um, yeah, any, if you get a little, if you get one lesson from each session, it's worth it, right? It's a little, little tidbit from each one. But eventually it'll all start making sense. All right, so EJ. 
Okay, let's zoom out. Very bullish, guys. Very, very bullish. Uh, we were bearish for a while. We had a huge transition here at this weekly, right? We blew through it early on. This was like, where was this? It's 2020, June 2020, May 2020. Just started surging higher, higher low. Took off to our monthly zone at 126.5. Came back, formed a huge bearish channel. Price action got caught at the 200 EMA and then started rallying again back into our monthly where we saw a crap load of consolidation and then a rally higher. So this is overall very bullish, guys. Uh, let's go right to the four hour and see what's going on. We are above this monthly. So so much so much more uh, support now for this, for this long idea, finally. Because all this consolidation, guys, over here on the left, if some of you remember, this was just absolute crap. I mean, unless you were trading the range, this was really just undefined direction. Okay, we had a couple of fake outs, false breakouts here. Another one very large came way back down, formed structure, a higher time frame fib, and then started rallying again. So we actually have a pretty high volume bullish uh, channel here, as you can see, surging higher, breaking levels of resistance. The most recent 127.4 pulled back, confirmed this higher low, which is great. And now we're looking at an MA cross on a four hour. So, guys, this is pretty much ready for entry. Uh, Angela, if you want to take a look at this one, it's definitely interesting. So we recently broke out of this. There was a lower time frame pattern here. We broke out of it, just tested support, right? Now we're looking for potential long opportunities right in here. And we could definitely see this reach our negative 27 fib level if the volume continues. There's a good amount of range here, 80 pips up to our next fib level, 130-ish. So guys, let's go to the one hour for a second. Take a closer look and see if this is, yeah, so again, this is actually looking really nice right here. So we just crossed the MAs even on the one hour, right? We retested. Now we're engulfing again. If this engulfs, I probably would take an entry on that. And it would look like this. Let's see. Uh, I want to bring these fibs over. One second. Just double check one of the four hour because they're four hour fibs. Okay. Back to the one hour. Let's zoom in a little bit. All right, cool. So let's go ahead, mark this. So if this kind of closes here, maybe with a little more volume, this is what we'd be looking at. Just about there, it's a two to one, 35 pips, you get about 70. Okay, so pretty good trade. Honestly, I would like this to be a little bit lower, but it would kind of skew a little bit, then a little bit below two to one. But I mean, this is still a good trade. And again, if it goes beyond up to uh, a higher level, you know, the risk reward just continues to grow. Okay, so well over two to one at that point, well protected stop loss. And yeah, that's essentially what it would look like. So this was this would be pretty ideal if it uh, engulfed right now, give us a little entry opportunity, uh, maybe test these MAs one more time and then took off. Enter on a conviction candle with little to no wick. Okay, you don't want to see really any selling pressure on a conviction candle. Just that's not something you want to see at all. All right, so this is looking pretty good. That's EJ, uh, the bullish outlook. Uh, what needs to happen for us to consider uh, short opportunities on EJ here? Transition of 127.4. This one's pretty clear cut, guys. This was the most significant zone, right? We get a lower high below that. We're clearly looking at uh, shorts again. And we'll target major support levels like 126.5, which is our monthly. All right, so that's EJ looking pretty good. Wait for this one to close, guys. Always wait for at least one uh, one hour closure. Okay, thirty minute one hour closure. That's what you're looking for. You know, if you're waiting for four hour closure, you're going to be a little bit behind. Probably not getting in at the best time. So, you know, but wait. Definitely wait for the thirty minute one hour closure. Okay, depending on you know how long the trade is. All right. So let's move on to gold. This will be the last one for me. And I'll pass it off to Angelo, but gold guys looking super bearish on the daily. Okay, very, very bearish on the daily. Overall, though, weekly, monthly, it's been very bullish. Okay, so it's been appreciating long term, as we can see here. This is the weekly time frame. This is March 2019, all the way back here. We're looking at around 1300 an ounce. Now we're, you know, damn near close to 2000, but uh, we just dropped below 1800. So overall, bullish long, uh, long term, right? However, on the daily, our high was 2000. Now we're back down below 1800. Okay, so let's go ahead and 
see what's going on here. So we know we're bearish, let's go to the four hour, see what's going on around this 1800 level. Okay, very bearish here, lower, lower lows, lower highs. We're respecting this trend line, respecting the 200 EMA as it's curving downward, uh, pretty much lining up. It's actually disappearing in this trend line. It's actually kind of funny, but very bearish. So right now we did, we just dropped below 1800. Okay, this is a pretty big level. We have a bib from this lower high down to this lower low. So you can see it's pulling back through the MAs. It's a good sign. I always like to use MAs as kind of a like two-step uh, MA pullback followed by an MA cross. So this would be the first step, the pullback. I want to see price action ideally reverse at structure here, 38.2 fib level, and then cross back through the MAs. That's part two for the MA, right? Back through on a nice bearish variation. I'll take that entry. Then I'm targeting down towards negative 27 fib level and potentially lower. We'll see. Uh, but this could be a really nice trade. So if gold keeps dropping with good volume here, that's like a 500 pip trade down toward the negative 27. Uh, so yeah, this could be a really nice short opportunity. But let's say it break, breaks back above 1800. Look for that higher low. Uh, if you're if you like you know a lot of risk or you're ballsy, whatever, take the long off that. If you see that higher low, if there's good confirmation there, sure, go for it. Target 1825. It'd be like a nice 250 pip trade off 1800. That's up to you, but that's what we need to see to kind of make this short opportunity invalid. And then again, for us to take any long opportunities, me personally, I wanna see a break back above 1825. I'd be a lot more comfortable selling up here on an early transition, enter on that, target higher and so on. All right, but right now this is looking so bearish guys. There's just gold is just looking to drop. And this was a nice little Analysis we did last week too. This we, we anticipated this drop. It's a nice textbook lower high, lower time frame head and shoulders, rejected the 200 EMA, just played out well, and then dropped nicely. So we'll see. Maybe we'll get something similar this week. It looks like you know we're kind of consolidating in the same fashion, except there's a little bit more volume here. So you know we'll see what happens. But that's gold, guys. And that's all I've prepared for you. The, I'll do a quick recap. I, I covered DXY which is dumping hard off the right out of the gate. Love to see it. What we like you, to see, bro, DXY dumps. Dude, it's just falling off a cliff, but that's, that's all right. That's all right. We're here to trade it either direction. That's so AU's pushing up, covered AJ, pushing up still. Look at that. Volume is immense this week. UJ, EJ, and gold. All right, so I'll pass it off to Angelo. I'll cover some of the rest of you guys. All right. So guys, cool. just to reiterate here, all of the Ooh, analysis, all of the analysis yeah. that we're going over is posted inside of the telegram chat. So if you guys are in the telegram, which you should be, that's how you guys got in the actual zoom meeting. We've got all the analysis in here posted up. This is all the analysis Nick just went over. This is everything that I'm about to just go over. And you can click on this, read through it after the session. You can play it forward later in the week to see how things are playing out. Um, so make sure you go in there, check, check that out. Every single week at the end of the week, guys, I do a video called Market Analysis Review, and I'll go over all the everything that we're doing right now, um, all the analysis and how everything played out. And for the most part, the analysis plays out really well, guys. So Nick mapped out, you know, yeah, two, yeah he, he mapped out two scenarios. You know, we're always looking on two sides of the market. We're not staying fixated on one trade or whatever, one idea. And we're just reacting, you know, we're reacting what are, to what we want to see. When we see what we want to see, like Nick saw on EJ, that's when you take a trade, guys. And, you know, that's when you're confident in the, in the position there. So I'm going to go ahead and rip through some of these major pairs just to get started. I'm just going to take a look at the dollar index one more time. We do use this as confirmation uh, for you beginners that are in here. We do use this as confirmation. I'm going to look at all the major pairs here. So knowing the value of the dollar, whether it's whether it's very bullish or very weak, you know, is, is going to be important in looking at all these other pairs. So let's just start off on the weekly time frame right away we can tell in the weekly time frame things are looking extremely bearish we're below the moving averages we did have a little bit of a push up the only thing is last week did form this doji type candle this normally does signal a sign of reversal here um so you know this is looking like 
it's going to be extremely bearish at the moment. But last week certainly started to show signs of like, okay, bear stepped in, failed to push it lower. It just stuck to this level. You know, could it break lower? We got to use lower time frame here to take a look. So down to the daily time frame, um, you know, things are looking a little bit unsettling on this. I do spot right away though, we've got this little head and shoulder, head and shoulders pattern. So I'm just gonna map this out for you guys. So you can see, so we've got this left shoulder, the head, and then we finish the right shoulder there. So if this pattern does finish, this thing is probably gonna head much lower. If this, ne this neckline would need to break for this pattern to complete. And this is just one of the patterns that you typically look for. This one in particular is, is more of a bearish in this situation is a bearish pattern. So going even all the way down to the four hour here, four hour time frame. All right, we got our pattern on now. Now, what do we need? You know, obviously for the, for us to, or for us to see, this is a serious level that's purging the support level right here. Obviously price hasn't broken below here in quite some time. Um, so pretty much this is going to be the test here, guys. This week is either going to be a push back up right off of this level, or it's going to be a, a quick, quick break and it's just going to dump and it's just going to head lower. So this week is really determined on what happens in, in really the next 12 hours or so with the, with the dollar index. Is it going to find support here? Um, you know, if it does, the dollar will be, will be stronger for the, for the like, first half of the week. If it breaks, then the dollar is going to be extremely weak. So with that in mind, um, we are bearish. The pattern is bearish. You know, let's go on to some of these other pairs now and see what the ideas are. So first, let's hit up USD CHF. Guys, we always start on the higher time frame. So here on the weekly kind of just a one look, we look very bearish. We're looking extremely bearish on this time frame. But as I start to zoom in a bit closer right here as to like what's going on in this actual area, look how these candles are forming, uh, very indecisive. We're below this monthly resistance level. We just opened above the moving average here. So bullish momentum is kind of in the market. Let's go down to the daily time frame and then even lower. So first on the daily, we had the break of this resistance level. So the daily is actually trending pretty bullish right now. And we're not looking at all this. We're just focusing in on this area right now. The daily is looking like very bullish at the moment. Last week, at the end of the week, we formed this doji type candle following this bearish candle. That's like a reversal sign for us. So this thing looks primed to head higher right now. Down to the four hour. Let's look at this. Um, so four hour time frame. I've got my main fib drawn here. This was our little break on the daily. This push to a new high. We fib this to the bottom. Remember, going into last week, the analysis was we're either going to break this um, and head lower, or we're going to find support here and we're going to push higher. And you know, as you could see how things played out, the market opened up right here. It spiked down into this demand zone, and then it found support and it just pushed higher right here, pushed about 100 pips to the upside. So this is very bullish now. This broke resistance, tested resistance. Now, you know, what do we do? When do we take a trade, blah, blah, blah. Um, we're going to wait for some sort of bullish price action. This is actually good indication right here, guys. I'm going to just highlight this. We had this like bullish variation form off of the support level. We've got a couple confirmations. 618 is right there. Resistance turned into the support. And then we've got that confirmation candle right there. If I were to bump down to the 30 minute time frame, this is when I'm starting to look for my potential entries. You know, I want to see breaks of structure. I want to see higher lows. I want to see something that I can enter on that makes me you know, comfortable getting into the position. Um, so as you can see here, this is a downtrend in the 30 minute. We've got this lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. And then we started to form all of this. This lower high failed. And we have this lower high here. And this is starting to turn into higher lows. We have this higher low, higher low, 
ultimately guys we would want this level to really be broken here that's the level that has yet to be broken um if i were to start to take long opportunities right now i would just throw my stops all the way below this level at about 33 pips and i would start to even long right now what would i target i would target up here but remember we're waiting to see what the dollar index does so if the dollar index falls this thing is going to fall as well, most likely, which which means the dollar would be very weak if the dollar index starts to fall. Uh, most likely, the Swiss franc would be stronger than the dollar, and this thing would, you know, head lower. But if the dollar does find support where it's at, then this thing will push higher. So, um, if we do wait right now on the dollar index, see how it plays out over the next couple hours. You know, we could wait, and then if this thing pops up, we could actually just start to long once we get above this level. And then we can move our stops. We'll have them here or even tighter. Um, so, you know, we don't have to take a trade at the moment, but the idea is realistically to go pretty bullish on this based on this four hour, this entire little trend here. This is doing really exactly what we teach, what we want to do. We had this retrace all the way down here, pushed up, passed resistance, pulled back, testing support. So setting up pretty well, guys, setting up pretty well. So Yusef, I'll put out some sort of a signal on this one in the chat when this thing does come up and I'm going to actually enter it myself, but I'm going to bump this one up the watch list right now. Let's just go over to UCAD. All right, so UCAD um, going on the higher time frame is overall extremely bearish, guys. I mean, look at this thing, bearish as fuck all the way. Coming into this week, we pushed down last week. I was expecting this thing to hit down into our monthly level, one, two, five, 500 is where I'm expecting this thing to test. And then let's just work down timeframes, daily time frame, bearish all the way. Look at this combination here, very bearish. Um, let's just break this down even more. Four hour time frame, again, bearish as fuck. I mean, look how it opens and fell. I wouldn't have taking entries on this off of the open, um, but it is heading lower as we expected. Um, so at this point, how are we gonna play this? Cause this was my one of two scenarios. Either we were gonna push right into this level, which looks like we are, or we were gonna get this pullback to this 38.2 area and see how my fib here is from this high to this low. And I'm not gonna move this thing until we start to establish a new lower low, which we are now. Um, once we get to our projection levels, we got the next, we got 27 here, 61.8 here. Once we get to those levels and form something like this, once this forms, this forms, even this, you know, starts to see support form, that's when I'll actually move my FIB. But for now, I'm just going to leave it on there and we're just going to use it for, uh, for a target. So, you know, if I were to go down to, I always say when the four hour, the daily, the weekly, when it all lines up and it's all bearish as fuck, that's when you should be on a lower time frame, just trying to look for some like scalping, like really just intraday entries, quick trades. You could see on this one, you know, this thing pulled back, had the bearish engulfing right here. Ultimately, this candle as well could have got in on a very easy kind of momentum based trade right there. And you would have just been targeting. First that negative 27, and then now we're targeting even lower. So I'm going to wait on this one. I'm going to keep it on the four hour. I'm going to see how it plays out. It could push all the way into this level. So keeping that one on the higher time frame. Let's go to NU. This one's freaking crazy. So last week, this thing really turned around. Let's break this down a little bit. We'll bump up to the weekly time frame. So Weekly time frame overall, very bullish, very bullish, been bullish as fuck. Um, but we are coming into now this like higher zone. We're not there yet. I'm just going to line this off. This is obviously a previous resistance level. Price came up into this area before and really fell off hard as fuck. So I'm looking for price to push back into this level right now. Um, coming down to the daily, as you can see, very bullish here. And then coming down to the four hour, four hour time frame actually broke and was, and was bearish, was trending bearish. We went over this. Um, and then all the way up until this point, 
it was it was still bearish. It actually broke some structure here. It was heading lower. And then we never found a lower high. This thing just pushed all the way up to this new high point now. So there's nothing we can do right now in regards to trading this pair. This thing's all the way at this high. We take out a long here. It's like taking a long on Bitcoin. Like everyone thinks it's going to go up, but we could get caught and this thing could come down fucking 85 pips. You know what I mean? So you don't want to get in a like long a here. If, yeah. If anything, you if you were trying to trade this, I would wait until it comes into a more significant selling zone and then look for like a quick sell out of the zone. Like don't sell now because it's not in any type of resistance or anything. So We'll see with NU. It's most likely going to push a little bit higher, uh, but there's really nothing doing on that for us. This one's looking a little bit better, um, EU. And I'm going to go a little bit more in depth on this one. So with EU on the weekly time frame, we're obviously very bullish right now. We pushed up as I zoom out a bit, because guys, always zoom out. Always zoom out, get a picture, like bigger picture, you know, what's going on. As you can see here, we retested this high point up here and found a lot of resistance. Look how this thing pushed off right here. Look how last week's candle formed, this doji candle, right after this bullish candle. So I'm looking for this thing to head lower. As we come down to the four hour, let's just very quickly, let's run through that little example that I do for you guys on market structure. Let's just run through it real quick. So we're going to break down like why I'm saying that we're in a downtrend. So what I'll do is I'll bring this path tool on and I'll just trace out this entire trend. And then I'll take off the candles. And this is for you beginners. If you guys don't understand structure, even I'll use this sometimes if I'm a little bit confused. I'll just trace everything and then I'll come back to where price started and I'll say, all right, let's just go from our low to our high right here. We use the 382 to tell us our first higher, like our first higher low level, unless price hits this, this is not a point of structure. So we came down, hit 50%, pushed up. Remember, we don't move the fib until we break zero and find resistance. So we broke zero, found some resistance here. So I'm gonna refib from this previous higher low right here to this new higher high, push down 61.8, push up. Now I'll refib this again to this new high. And then look what happens here. This is our previous higher low. This thing breaks. This is like a textbook break right there. Boom. Then, that, then we flip around our fibs because we're now in a downtrend. And as you can see, price came up, hit 38.2, push down. Broke 0%. So now we're refibbing this again right here. And then this is another great example. We came up to 78.6, pushed down. We don't break 0%, but this is definitely our previous lower high. So if this breaks, then this trend will break. Um, then we don't move our fibs until this entire uh, thing is pu pushes below 0%. So now it pushes up to 618. This is my most previous higher low. Now we're getting into like actual price right now. Then we broke 0%. Boom. Now I have my most late, my most recent FIB on here. And as you can see, we came up to 100%, didn't break, came down, pushed back up. Now we're back at that same level. So until we break this resistance, guys, I'm still looking for sells um, off of this level. And this would line up really well if dxy found some support right now so i'm gonna take off all that now look this is like my hypotheticals this is this is how i base mark my market structure on now i'm looking at the chart you know we're in a downtrend we pushed up to form this lower high now we push down now we're back in the sell zone so i'm looking for sells out of this zone guys i'm realistically selling at the highs the probability right here is, is very likely that this will head lower and you could just throw your stops very conservatively above this level right now. I would just throw it above the wick to be very safe. If you were to just take some cells at the top here, if you want to wait for some more rejection, see how this thing is getting uh, more bullish. If you wanted to wait for some more rejection, like more wicks in this area or whatnot, um, 
than I would. And then, you know, we get it on even better entry. So I am looking for shorts on EU. I'm going to move this one up the watch list a little bit. And I just want to make a pointer that look previously price came down bullish engulfing like we're seeing right now pushed up you know so we're gonna play it safe on this one but i am definitely looking for shorts i won't long until on the four hour this thing closes above this level this one two one five hundred level until price closes cleanly above this level guys we're gonna look for shorts on that one so last but not least i'm gonna take a look at gu uh, on the weekly time frame, this thing has been bullish as fuck for quite some time, heading higher and higher. We did just reach a resistance level, though, right now. We did reach a resistance level, 140, right around that area. So I am going to look for a potential um, reversal here. Nothing too crazy because the four hour is still very bullish. So if I were to draw, like, we got this little trend line now going here. I'm going to actually take this one off. So I'm looking for price to come back down. We're at the top of this. I have this like whole channel drawn on the daily time frame. We're at the top of that. We're hitting resistance. We're at a high. So I am looking for this thing to pull back into this 32, but more ideally this like 61.8 area retest resistance, turn support. There's a lot of confluence here. So I'm looking for this thing to push about 100 pips to the downside guys and this is going to line up with eu if eu pushes to the downside then gu will most likely push as well just meaning the dollar will be getting stronger and that also means yousef would push up as well so those are all lined up together these these uh you know these three pairs these three ideas are all very bullish with the dollar uh with usd cad i mean it's it's very similar we're looking for this is an overall downtrend so this is kind of like just a little lesson this is an overall downtrend yes but if the dollar does go bullish here this thing's going to push up but remember we're still in a downtrend so as this pushes up as those pairs put like eu is in a downtrend and it's lining up with the dollar so like if the dollar goes bullish eu will continue its trend UCAD's like that kind of the opposite. If the dollar goes bullish, UCAD will retrace within this trend. And then once it gets to this like 38.2 level, the dollar will most likely start to slow up and you'll see this play out over the course of the week. And then we'll look to short. So it's just, you gotta be very aware as to what you're gonna do on each individual pair. Cause each individual pair is in a totally, totally different trends, you know, based on the, the um, two pairs or whatever. So. That's just one idea that I have with UCAD. This thing could push higher into this level. So all the pairs that I went over is USEF, EU, GU, UCAD, and NZD, USD. Again, guys, all of these are posted inside. Let me see if I could pull it up. Yeah, everything here is posted in the Discord and sorry, the Telegram here too, um, and the Telegram chat. I'm going to go ahead throw this on YouTube um, after this session. And for you guys that are in the signals, uh, the signals will get started up soon. We're just waiting for a few things to play out, um, but the signals will, will get set up in here. So if you guys wanna join the signals or any of the other services, I believe I have it up. Um, the signals are 75 a month. There is a course that comes with that. You can sign up right here inside of Telegram. All you need to do, come into this main chat. You see there's a message at the top. Come in here, all of our services are listed here. Our free services are here too. Um, and there will be free signals in the chat this week. So there will be, I believe one free signal per day will be in the regular Telegram chat. And then in the premium group, there'll be about three per day. Um, so look out for that. If you're in the free thing, we're still dropping you guys some fire free content out here, fire free signals. So look out for that. But if you want, you know, the real thing, if you're trying to catch the real thing, as they say, then you got to sign up for the premium. Yep. That's right. And, and you know, this, the free stuff's good too. Don't get me wrong. It's, you could learn a lot. It's definitely the best place to go if you're a beginner, but you know, if you do realize that you know, trading is for you and you're ready to commit, you know, you got to, you got to take the leap. You got to, you gotta yeah. I mean, guys, more. we're not trying to sell you on anything. Cause at the end of the day, 
there is so much free content that we're delivering that you can entirely learn for free. You know, when it comes to the premium and it comes from the lifetime membership and signing up with that, I mean, it's a whole other level of commitment to get involved in and that, you know, whatever you'd like to do, whether it's join us as a community or another community, we always recommend um, for you guys to become a part of something, become a part of something bigger yeah. than yourself, something that's given you all the information that you really need to get started. Cause it's just going to help at the end of the day. I mean, absolutely. If you fully immerse yourself in it, uh, you know, in a community or, you know, wherever you go that, you know, relates to you, it's going to make the biggest difference. It really, it's really yeah. the next level. Is. Yeah. I mean, me and Nick have been there. I mean, I'm not in the office right now because fortunately I have COVID, but I'm at home right now. But me and Nick have been there. You know, you're starting in your room, you're starting, start trying to figure out a trade. And, you know, it's, it's not a, it's a lonely type of situation. And there's obviously a lot of people that are going to doubt, you know, the time that you're putting into something. And, you know, so you want to really surround yourself with people who are obviously going to give you words of encouragement, but that are just doing what you're trying to do. Like at the yeah, end of the I was day, actually like, yeah. just thinking about this today too. Cause when I was learning, I was actually reflecting back a little bit today and I was kind of asking advice from people when like, you know, when I was learning to trade, if, you know, they hadn't heard anybody that had you know been successful or if they thought it was worth it. But I soon realized, well, actually maybe not soon, but a couple of years later, I realized that I was asking advice from people that weren't traders that, that didn't really, you know, self-educate that jumped into I didn't jump into those, you know, communities or scenarios or just business in general. So like, yeah, it was a struggle for a while because a lot of people are going to doubt you on your journey. So it really helps if you jump in a community with like-minded individuals, you know, even a free one, our discord's free, just start chatting up with other traders because everyone there is focused on the same goal or has, you know, a story to tell, or, you know, has had some experiences with things that could guide you a little better. Um, but yeah. yeah, no, just, just a thought I had had earlier, to be honest. Yeah, guys. I mean, it's, it, there's a big, there's a big difference between it's a big shift in mindset to go from the working kind of the working class to the uh, owning a business, you know, owning multiple businesses or just generating income from multiple sources. It's a big shift. You know, there's a lot of people that don't, that are, that are scared to pursue like multiple sources of income and more like having ownership and, and assuming the risk of uh, owning a business and stuff. But I mean, you guys will realize at the end of the day that, um, you know, putting yourself in those types of situations is really going to benefit you, like to say the least, it's really going to benefit you. Um, but it's not easy. You know, it's not easy. Not everyone's doing it for a reason, but it's totally possible. Like it's not impossible. You have to just be organized guys and you have to set the intention on what do you actually want to have? You got to be very realistic with your goals. Like if you have no progress right now, someone hit me up like yesterday and was like, can I possibly make 250 K in, in seven months? And I, they didn't even have MT4 downloaded. Like they didn't even know. And I'm like, dude, like you need to first download the app. Like how are you supposed to even you know what I mean? Like how are you even supposed to make a dollar? You don't even have the app on your and phone. And I think that's also what's kind of funny too, is that it's just, there's just a general lack of education on the subject. And, you know, people kind of join into it for the wrong reasons, but then, you know, get humbled very quickly and then either leave or stay. And then that's kind of why, you know, a lot of uh, finance or financial trading gets a bad rep, you know, especially, you know, like high yeah. frequency stuff or Forex because it's just misunderstood. And, you know, how can you have an opinion about something if, you know, you're not educated on the subject or, you know, really know anything about yeah, it? Yeah. I mean, guys, so. like any business, me and Nick always preach, we know the traders are out there on the internet that they're like, put in a thousand bucks and get one to 500 leverage and flip your account to a million. And you know what I mean? Like, all right, I get it. Like you guys, you know, you want to, you, you can do that on the side. Like you can, by all means, if you have an extra hundred dollars every month, you know, as a hobby, you can gamble away that money and you can try to flip it in the Forex right. market. But when it comes That's to possible, yeah, possible. when it comes to like trading and pursuing a professional, creating a professional source of uh, an extra source of income and becoming a trader in, in some capacity, there, there has to be a level of professionalism to, to your craft. Like 
you have to understand that you, you need to risk a certain amount on every trade. Like you can't be <laughs> blowing your account after and doing this for so thing. long. That's the thing too, to your point is a lot of these guys that are showing these hundred account or hundred dollar account flips, they're professional traders. They've already gone through all the trials and tribulations where they can throw a hundred dollars in an account, use, you know, max risk or whatever, flip an account and then show it, you know, as advertising and this is possible, this and that, but he's not showing. It's like that iceberg. You guys always see it on Instagram. I'm sure that an infograph with the iceberg, you know, success is a very small peak showing. And then all the hard work is submerged below the water, right? Very similar. Like he's showing showing you what he's worked years and years for but then even then he's taking a risk and not really delivering yeah just understand uh, the situation that you're in if your monthly income is a thousand bucks i mean don't put a thousand bucks in a trading account and try to flip it and, and risk the whole account right. I mean, you should be probably trading like a 200 hundred dollar account i mean your income is, is that would be 20 percent right. of your income so you know what i mean like and there's no there's no harm no foul we recommend to everyone to start on demo, like start on demo and then trade a $200 account and then become consistent on that. And then just go for one of these funding companies that we have right. the one that we work with, obviously FX seed or FTMO, like there's other ones, but you can go with FX seed. You can, you, you only need to make 10%, you know, in the month to prove yourself. So if you can make that on a $200 account, guys, you're golden. Like you're gold. You're, you're literally you're chilling. Low. You're spot on at that point. You're literally chilling. Like you don't need to worry about account flips at that point. Like literally right. no, no. If you make 5% on the hundred K account. Like you're making five times your thousand dollars a month that you're making now. So. Right. There's it's opportunity. Now, of, right? it, it's, yeah. It's a changing market. And there's, there's, you just need the, there's the whole thing. It goes back a little bit too. We're just talking about, you know, educating yourself about, you know, the Forex market. Cause there's so much opportunity. There's so many different ways you can go. And how do you know what you don't know? Right. So, yeah, there's just you know, a lot of misinformation deep. out there. Like we're trying to just be very transparent with you guys. And like the misinformation that, that is out there is that people are showing in their MT4, like they're making a million dollars trading. Like guys, like let's, let's be real here. Like these people that are showing you this, they're like Nick said, like there's a iceberg, like there's, there's more to the, to the story that you guys aren't aren't seeing but at the end of the day i mean people are lured into these types of income opportunities because of the fact that they are uncapped you know because of the potential no boss and and because people are on the internet showing them driving lamborghinis and stuff like you Mark, know I mean? like that's powerful and it plays on emotion and that's if you could realize what that is too guys you know they're playing on emotion when they're flashing some of those things or yeah and don't, a million be, dollar account. don't be angry at these people or don't be angry if you aren't successful in trading like guys don't just like there's these people have multiple sources of income like there's not it's not just trading like people have multiple sources of income because at, at, at that point if if you weren't creating passive sources of income like you're really not that intelligent of a businessman or an entrepreneur right. like if you were just a million dollar trader and you weren't creating other passive sources of income and you get sick, I mean, man, you're fucked. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> you're you know, fucked. it's so true. It's so trading true. is the, a trading right. is a performance based is a performance based role, guys. I mean, it's an extremely you know emotional situation. You you gotta obviously disconnect from the emotions and trade very you know strategically and follow the plan. But at the end of the day, you need to show up and be on the top of your game, or you're gonna get smacked. Yeah. No, it's, it's true. It's, it's, it's a hard truth, but it, the, the bottom line guys is it is possible with realistic goals and you know, what else would you say? A good work ethic, honestly, and the desire to learn. I mean, yeah, I would just say it's possible if like any other business, if you have a business model, if you have a business model, AKA a trading plan, like you can learn technical analysis fairly quickly guys. But the part that, that struggles with people is the risk management, getting away from using the right, consistent lot sizing like right. all the things these forex gurus don't want to teach you because they want you to think that that the potential is so much that you should pay three thousand dollars to buy some shit from them like no like you need to be very humble and very grounded and you need to say that i'm gonna put together a plan and test it on a hundred dollar account and the right. larger goal is like for me to get funded and you know that's at least 
that's the goal for all the members inside of our chat. The, the goal for all the members inside of our chat, paid or free, is to trade with discipline, to be professional, and to be consistent to the point where they can gain access to more opportunities. You know what I mean? Not like these bullshit, weird, I'm going to flip my account and compound it, like those weird charts that show like 90 days making like yeah. 1%. <laughs> It looks like, yeah, it looks like Bitcoin on steroids or something. It doesn't make it. Yeah, nice. it's like, it's just so weird. Like just, guys, just move at your own pace. You know, like Nick said, I mean, the work ethic certainly will help. But if you're organized and you're you're just consistent day in and day out, you're journaling, think, yeah. you know, you're reviewing trades, you're, you're coming up, you're back testing, which is the most important thing to do. You're testing the strategy out. Like you guys are going to be fine. You're going to learn and you're going to progress quickly and, you're going to get to the point where you're very close to making money and then you guys are making money and that's it. Yep, exactly. And it's a process and just, you know, just dive into it if you really want to do it and, you know, leave all doubt aside because if you commit to it, you're committing to it and it's going to be successful at one point or another. Yeah. And at one point or another guys, it is like we're saying, create these other sources of income. If you have a job that you don't even have time to do anything else, then you need to leave that job and you need to create, you need to generate income from another source of a job. There's no harm in having a job. Like if you need to have a job, you have a job, then you need to, you know, get some, some, some sort of other source of income or cut your expenses or something in order to spend time on learn, learning to trade, maybe creating a different source of income as well. Like don't work like 13 hours a day and then leave yourself no room to, to build, you know, on the side. I mean, you're going to have to build guys. We built for, for years, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, years and years and years. And there's some mistakes that are going to happen. Like you're not going to be perfect. So. Right. Like good example too. I mean, we'll wrap up with this. I mean, or, you know, a couple more things. And mm -hmm. when I was learning too, I was going to school and working a full-time job too. So like i couldn't you know devote that that much time to learning and it made it tough but you, know, you gotta you know squeeze in where you can understand that you're not rushed to i know with when you because i had a subscription for like a couple months this other community and i felt pressured because there was a subscription always on me you know so i felt like i had to get in x amount of hours a day or a week to you know make it worth it but um you know squeeze that kind of the hours bro yeah but like you know make it work but do it at your pace guys you know don't kill yourself trying to learn how to trade you know I mean, I've probably done that one too many times, staying up too, not, too, too late, probably with Angela going over charts until her eyes are bloodshot. Don't do that like every night, you know, yeah. but find time to uh, build on something. Even if not trading, you know, just find time to hustle, find time to build a passive income. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, you know, obviously we're going over some of the products that we're offering here. Just real quick. Again, the signals, we give out the trades with the entry and the stop loss and the take profit. The trade copier are the signals, except they get copied straight to your account. So you don't actually have to enter anything. You could just manage them, uh, but you don't even have to manage them. We'll manage them for you. And then the lifetime membership is just $4.99 one time. You don't have to pay the monthly on any of these. And then you get access to, to really everything you need uh, to not only learn how to trade, but with the one-on-ones, you could talk with, uh, with me and Nick. We have another team member as well that we'll be introducing soon that will start to be more involved and and just kind of get inside the day-to-day, -day, um, you know, what we're doing and we are available. So you could schedule the calls with us um, on Wednesdays is when we do the one-on-ones. And uh, yeah, I mean, we connect with people from, from all over the place and we've seen people become very successful and people become very not successful. So it's, you know, it's really the, the, the thing that separates these people is, is really just the, I guess you could say the time or their ability to, to like their comprehension level, like their ability to, to really comprehend new information. Some people, it takes more time. And then the people that it takes more time because they don't have that level of comprehension, like they just give up. So like, guys, if you, if you just go into it, like, I will never give up. I will find a way to do this. You might become the best signal taker ever. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's, there's ways to make money. Like you guys just need to have that, the right attitude of like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to figure this out. Like if you have the attitude of like, at one point, the person you bought this from 
owes you something or like they didn't give you what you needed. Like I'm telling you right now, me and Nick, literally we built the whole course based on what people didn't give us. So, so there, everything is in there. Like everything you could possibly need, uh, you know, from a very baseline perspective is inside. Like I know that for a fact. Yeah. For a fact. Cause we built it from a student's perspective. You know, we literally spent a lot of time building out everything that we wanted included and then just made it. So, yeah. Cause we had these conversations like, Oh, these people on Instagram are showing Lambos and not telling you to use risk management and don't even know what a lot size calculator is and tell you to risk one lot per thousand dollars and all this other bullshit. And, sure. and I'm just like, you know, if we just give the, the, if we just tell the truth, I mean, it's going to help people and that's what it's doing. So at the end of the day, you know, we got into this, to kind of just tell the truth, but also just to meet people and just to, like we just talked about guys, create another source of income for ourselves. Everyone deserves to be paid based on the value they create for the ecosystem we're in. You know, we're all, we're in this like global economy now, actually with uh, the crypto crypto game, but yeah, it's right. It's connecting everybody. I mean, this, this chat literally proves it. I mean, shit. You know, yeah. beginning, you know, 50, 50 people from 50 different locations. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. It it's is. crazy. It's crazy. So this is only going to continue to, to, you know, grow and, and Forex league is only going to continue to, to give out new opportunities. I mean, heck we're, we're planning some things right now. We, we were hoping to do some in-person courses, um, you know, this year, but obviously the coronavirus has, has taken over everyone's lives. So we'll get to that at some yeah. point or another, but you know, Absolutely. we're, it's we're in it to, to meet as many people as possible and, you know, to build these relationships, hopefully in person at some point. Um, but for now, you know, over, over the web. Yeah. Hopefully sooner than later though, guys, we'll just, you know, wait till this is done and then, you know, we'll approach it the right way. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we'll probably end up meeting most of you guys at some, some hangouts or uh, some meetups or something something yeah but no we've guys, already been planning we've already been planning some some things and uh you know we're gonna have our fun too when it comes to showing showing some uh we'll, we'll get like a kid's lambo we'll drive it around <laughs> <laughs> i want the pink one the pink one that's what i'm going for <laughs> but yeah that's yeah we will we'll show some behind the scenes stuff guys you know we're starting to transition a little more but um yeah so as, as it gets a little warmer here especially we're showing you guys a little more behind the scenes yes sir all right so we uh we got still 43 people hung on so we appreciate all you guys hanging on hearing us rant about you know a bunch of bunch of different stuff but in all honesty hope you guys learned you know a thing or two we'll be back on wednesday at 9 a.m eastern time uh for the next live trading session you can catch this one on youtube afterwards and uh yeah i hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day your night wherever the hell you guys are at <laughs> Take it easy, guys. Peace Thanks out, everybody. Going.